Hey friends. Um, something came back to me just this morning as I was thinking about, so I had a, I had a meditation experience this morning, which was kind of cool. And so I was doing my morning meditation and I, I have been for a while now doing a kind of combination of two practices or alternating between two practices. One practice is simply breath meditation. So I just focus on the air coming in my nose and exiting my nose. It's called anapana meditation. It's also a meditation that Chogyam Trungpa talks about in his book. I think it's a pretty common Buddhist meditation. I learned it in the on a Vipassana retreat. And basically, it just puts our focus right on this air, this air hole, these air holes. And the thing about it that is so effective is that it's physical. It's a physical sensation, which means it is inherently in the present moment. You can't, you can't feel the air entering your nose or exiting your nose in the future or in the past. You have to feel it now. There is only the, it is, it just by putting our focus on something that is inherently in the present moment, it brings our awareness into alignment. Not necessarily, doesn't necessarily put us in the present moment because our mind can still be running a mile a minute. <clears throat> But it begins to create a kind of anchor in the present moment that we can hold on to and that, you know, with practice will draw us ever more completely, ever more fully into present moment awareness. Um, so that's one practice. And I, I, I've been, I, I got it more recently. I got it from Chogyam Trungpa's book and started doing it. Um, but I also have a meditation where I simply put my, put my attention on consciousness itself, which is a little bit more of a higher level meditation that I learned years ago. I sort of just started doing it myself and then went to, on some retreats and worked with some people who were saying the same thing. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess this is actually a thing people do because I had just started doing it on my own. And basically... You know what, what that means is I you in if we if we can come into a perception of our own consciousness. In other words, everything that we experience is the content of consciousness, but consciousness itself is the perceiving. It's the witness. It's the perceiving presence within which everything happens and and we can't it is actually possible to direct our gaze at that now it's always there's no there's no there there there's nothing to observe but we can simply become conscious that we're conscious and, and what generally happens to me when I do that is that there, it's almost like when you take two mirrors and you point them at each other, and if you get them aligned, you, you know, even as you're, as you're starting to like get them closer and closer, you, you know, how, how like images, repeating images start to, start to kind of cascade back. You start to see, maybe the, initially you just see like three or four, and then you see a bunch, and then all of a sudden it becomes infinite. That's what directing consciousness at itself is like. You, we, we become aware of consciousness. And then we almost instantaneously realize, but now I'm not aware of it anymore because I have to be conscious of that and conscious of that and conscious of that. And conscious of that. Any, 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 any realized perception within consciousness immediately becomes content and ceases to be the consciousness itself. But that process of always taking like one step back or one step in or one step out. I mean, truly whatever omnidirectional way that we move in order to bring our awareness to awareness starts to create this 
reflective mirrors effect. And, but what will sometimes happen is I will start my meditation that way. And then I will get distracted by a thought. And then before I know it, I'm like over here somewhere thinking something. And then I have to come back and go, wait, huh, that's, that's some meditation. Here I am. It's all meditation, but I'm saying the practice is coming back. Right. But what I've noticed is that sometimes the awareness of awareness meditation, if I'm not already pretty grounded, pretty rooted, pretty stable, it can be, it can sort of never really gain traction. I don't really get into a deep meditation doing that if I'm not already kind of in a stable place. So I've been doing these things alternately for a while. And today, for the first time, I was like, wait a minute. Why can't I start with breath meditation, which is pretty simple. And the place that I'm bringing my awareness back to is not quite as all-encompassing as consciousness itself. It's just a simple physical sensation. Start there root myself and then transition to the next level of meditation and then as soon as I had that realization I was like what wow of duh why did it take me so long to figure this out why why did it take me so long to to realize that these are all tools they're not like religions that I have to like believe in one or the other just do this thing and then you'll get enlightened it's not that that's not how it works like they're all tools for cultivating awareness so I can use I can employ them in whatever way I want anyway I'm catching up here folks but I realized that I recognized that and I thought okay great now I kind of have a system now I have a way of being in meditation if I drift off I've got a simple thing that brings me back to the anchor and then from the anchor, I can kind of look up at the sky again and take in that sort of deeper level of like awareness of awareness that it shades into infinitude very quickly. Um, but it's empowering when we realize we have tools to use for our own development. And not only that, but, a, but we, the whole point is to be continuously trying them out in a new way, continuously seeing where the tools can take us because it's so easy to get into a routine or a habit or just a way, I meditate this way every day, right? And not even that that's, if, if your meditation is serving you and bringing us, bringing you into presence and giving you that, that added kind of continuously evolving consciousness every day, great. Don't change anything. But, if there are times when, I don't know, it's not, feels like either the practice is slipping or the practice is happening, but it doesn't feel connected. You know, it's all about taking what we already do know and, and finding enough playfulness with it or intrigue with it you know can we get fascinated finding fascination in what we're doing so that it just bumps us a step down the road right just takes us on down the road so anyway um that's what showed up for me today that's kind of exciting to feel myself employ the same tools it was like I almost was like oh these aren't different tools these are all one 
these are these are, or they are different tools, but they're all part of one skill set and process. And I and I can use them. I don't have to be choosing between one kind of meditation and another kind of meditation. I can use them actually to support each other. You know, use them as the sort of like handholds that we use to climb a mountain or the footholds to climb a mountain. Um, and something about that was very inspiring and encouraging. So that's where I am today, people. I think I'm going to talk about meditation a little more these days. It's been coming back as a real seat of my practice. No pun intended. Uh, yeah. I'll be talking more about this in future videos. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you. Have a great day. See you soon.